biology and chemistry, so I'm, a, I'm more of a numbers person. Um, but I remember in math class where, where you had students who didn't understand math, as, as a class collection, I was one of those who I love math, so he would pair me with students that didn't understand math. And as a, as a team in the classroom, then the classroom all got on one understanding of math. And I remember Stacy Lawson, because he was the football, the basketball star, and if you didn't have the grades, you would get kicked out of the team. And I remember working with Stacy because back then it wasn't smart or unintelligent. It was everyone helped each other get to that level of understanding. And so I remember Stacy, who struggled in math, jumping up saying, oh my God, I get it, now I understand it, because the teacher in that classroom made sure that every student got it no matter what and what was important that I remember that doesn't happen now. Those teachers back then had more than one teaching style. And so if his students in the classroom didn't get it this way, he had another way of reaching that student. And what I'm hearing is that teachers now, they only have one teaching style. And if you don't get it the way we teach you, then you're considered, you know, not smart. Which it's, I come from the law of, it's not the student's fault that the teacher didn't get it, it's the teacher's fault. That's where I come from. And so, right now, there's a lot of students who feel as if they're not intelligent or they're not smart because they don't know that it's really the teacher, it's not, not them. So I don't, I don't feel there's no hope, I just feel that they don't know. Not to dominate, but. <laughs> but to dominate. <laughs> um, absolutely, I understand what you're saying, and I think that it has to start somewhere to the point of, there's been a style, maybe one particular style, but I think you don't know what you don't know. And these young people, you say, they're not with it. They're not really, they're not really ready. Or because they don't know. I don't what think do it's been introduced, in but that's what you need. I think you, don't, you need people to say, I'm gonna bring a revolutionary approach to your, to your classroom. I'm gonna take the time to say, I know this is usually how we have these little exchanges, but you know what? Let's try it differently. Let's try this and see how it works. So I think, to your question, what do you think about young people incorporating or embracing a conscious conversation approach? Let's bring it in there and try it out. I think it could work, but they don't have it. It's not been introduced. It's not something that they're accustomed to. They're, they're not seeing it at home. They're not seeing it amongst their friends. So it is responsibility of, of us as parents, as caregivers, as educators to say, let's try this differently and see where it goes. I don't think it could hurt. I, I just want to be clear. I think it's great. But I do have clients in, in my office who are teachers. And literally, I'm listening to her argue with her superiors about trying to get kids to identify themselves with which color crayon they represent. And I'm like, why is this even a topic of conversation in third grade where you're trying to get black kids to identify themselves to what shade, color, crayon? Like, this is really a conversation in, in the school system? So how do we go from that kind of curriculum that a, the that a Board of Education is allowing to having a conscious conversation to self, you know what I'm saying? So there's, there's what we want, I think is great, but then there's a block on a Board of Education that's really, when it comes to our kids, really don't want them on that higher frequency. It's great, I, I would love to see it there, but there is a board of education that really does not want our children on a higher frequency. And that's the piece that we can't let the school system be the reason that we don't reach our kids. So what if we don't get in the school system? How do we get our kids on a higher frequency regardless of the school system? 
So I, 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 I'm not saying there's no hope, but I am saying that there has to be a seed planted where I can identify with a Miss Brown or this young lady here that represents me, that I can be great, that I can be something other than what I've seen on, on TV. So yeah, I do agree that there is. <laughs> Well, I am an educator and I am in, in it. Uh, I teach teenagers in Georgia. And I wanna say kudos to you for being that type of teacher that connects with her students because that's what's important. You have to connect with them and they have to know that you, you see yourself as them. I think a lot of teachers feel disempowered. I think um, a lot of teachers don't think they, they don't understand the autonomy and the power that they really have. And a lot of times when I'm talking to my peers and my colleagues, it, you know, it's kind of like you have to have a, a dual mindset that when you, because when you go in there, it's you and those students. But you have to be able to um, be creative enough to, you know, their mandates, their checklists. Because a lot of what they ask you to do is not that deep. And it's not that challenging, but you know how uh, we create stress in our minds. We live in our minds, so we make it a lot worse than it is. But, it, it takes a teacher to be able to say, you know, I can do this checklist because it's everything's standards based now. So if you can say I'm doing standard, um, we got to be able to determine theme in the story. If you can make that connection and be creative, which you can. Now I'm a language arts teacher, so we tend to be more creative. So I can make anything work and connect. And I have used some of the, you know, I'm about teaching them how to listen and have conversations. And it is possible, but consistency. You have to be consistent. Uh, you have to. Um, connect what you're doing to their lives. You have to make it seem like what they're doing is relevant. And you just, you have to really want to be there. And I do have some colleagues that are in it because they want to be there. And some that I think started out that way, but they get discouraged because of the blockages. So you, you got to have uh, teachers like her and myself. You know, I'm at the tail end of my career, but you, you have to have teachers that are like, you know, we're here because we love young people and we want to connect. And if you have that at the foundation, then you can make that work. You can make the conscious conversation, but it is consistency. And then you might have a Miss Brown here, and you get next door, and you got Miss Smith, and she's just writing something on the board, send down. And and that's the 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 that's public school. You don't really have control over that. So you know when you send your kids to public school, it's like rolling the dice. You know you you hope you get a Miss Brown, but you may not always have a Miss Brown. So it is possible but you have to have people in there that are in it because they love young people and they want to connect and you know we know how the world is you have people like that and then you don't so i'm the parent or we are the parent that sends you a child slightly prepared for what we're looking for for our child uh, and I just spoke with this young lady earlier in reference to having been a hands-on uh, grandfather versus, oh, you should, have, you should have seen what Johnny did today and mother saw everything that Johnny did and mother had the opportunity to offer Johnny the ABCs and what have you. I've, I've had the fortune of being a hands-on grandfather and seeing child development. So, Working with what I'm looking for in the best interest of my children makes it easier for you when you receive my child. And then I'm more particular about you if you're not on the same plane that I'm looking for my child to be on. Uh, we're, very, we're very involved in the school system that our children have gone to. And I must, I can, knock on wood for four out of four, they all had the proper tools to be somebody. What they did with them at certain journeys in their life came back to, I don't understand how the heck you got there. Because <laughs> it wasn't taught at home. So seeing kids out in the, in the street, shopping, plazas, playgrounds, what have you, with a parent that talks to them in an adult, negative form and allows them to carry out that way, that's where you're, you're coming in contact with that child, that you don't, that millennium that you don't understand. I was walking into a Chinese restaurant about three weeks ago and the, the mother and father had 
I, I assume it was the mother and father had just exited the, the, the store and the kid had to have been 